So welcome again to the Mayoral Community Forum. I am Mayor Kashina A. Cross from the city of Glen Arden. Today, we have a very unique mayoral forum. This forum builds on last year's forum where we had Dr. Delaney and our returning guest, the director, president of the Prince George's County NAACP chapter, Ms. Linda Thomas. That mayoral forum was so amazing as we talked about the creation of this African-American History Month and what it means to the African diaspora today. One of the missions of this year's elected members of the NAACP, Prince George's, is to answer that question. How do we look at our African diaspora? I've been very fortunate in this call to bring some extremely unique guests on the line. I reintroduce and introduce to some Linda Thornton Thomas, the president of the NAACP Prince George's County. Her leadership and her role has been to expand the organization's capacity to mobilize local campaigns around voting rights, criminal justice reform, racial justice, police accountability, poverty, inequality, among other human rights issues. And it is Ms. Thomas's passion that civil rights and the rule of law that drives her responsibilities today. Against the civil rights, she works with lawmakers from both sides of the aisle to collaborate, support, and find common ground on racial issues. Welcome to you, Director Thomas. I also want to introduce a guest from my community when I was in San Antonio, Texas in the United States Air Force, and also Air Force uh, veteran, Ambassador Keith Roll. Dr. Keith E. Roll is a peace ambassador for the United Nations, a visionary president and the current executive director of the Royal Ambassadors Ministry Incorporated, a faith-based nonprofit 501c C3 organization, which provides services and facilitates medical clinic um, brigades and outreaches for humanitarian and phil philanthropy initiatives and education excellence program projects. Dr. Roll is the CEO and a consultant of the Executive Network LLC, the Kingdom Claritin. I've had a unique opportunity to be on his program a few times now. This is a global network call. He also leads several other organizations for two successful radio hosts, as well as a certified life leadership coach, certified global poverty specialist, roundtable facility, facilitator and global speaker, and again, a retired chaplain from the United States Air Force. Welcome, Ambassador Roll. I will introduce you to the U.S. Federation of NESCO, UNESCO clubs. This is Director Guy DeJokin. He is the president of the U.S. Federation of UNESCO clubs. Center of Association, permanent representation of the Federation of these clubs and the Center of Association, the WFUCA to the United Nations. He is the executive director for UNESCO Center for Peace. Director Dujokin is a global advocate for social justice civil and human rights, extensive public speaking, experience in the domestic as well as the international settings. He gives lectures at Harvard University in Boston and the University of Tsukuba in Japan. And he is also um, giving lectures to the University of Sorbonne in Paris, France, just to mention a few of the accolades of locations that he's had the unique opportunity to serve. 
As the president of the Frederick County NAACP, the National Association of Advancement of Colored People, from, from 2004 to 2016, he worked to restore the tarnished image of the Frederick County branch as noted in Washington's Post article titled, African Civil Rights Activist Strives to Repair the NAACP. Dr. DeJokin is honored to also be named as the representative to the nations, the African nations for the Democratic Central Committee. Welcome to you, Director DeJokin. I am so honored to have additionally on this line, communicators, Pastor James O. Johnson, Jr. and Director of the Friends of the African Union, Mr. Herschel Daniels. We are so honored to have each of you on this line. Joining us additionally is Bishop William Lockhart, also from the Friends of the African Union. So without further ado, with a mighty powerhouse of communicators, advocates for peace and justice, we bring this mayoral community forum to the broadcast. We start this communication off with the question, what is the African diaspora? As we, in this African American Heritage Month, recognize that there is a worldwide collection of communities that are descended from the nations of Africa. Preponderantly in Americas, this term is currently and commonly referred to the descendants of the West, the Central Africans who were enslaved and shipped to the Americas via the Atlantic slave trade between the 16th and the 18th century. This African diaspora is the largest population in the United States of America. I thank you so much for being with us as we talk to the topic of the African nations meets the Africa diaspora. Why is it? What are the challenges? All right, let's go, Director Dujokin. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Can you all hear me? We can hear you. Okay, so I was just saying that uh, it's very uh, timely that the Democratic Party uh, just uh, last week appointed me as the liaison eh, between the party in Maryland and the 54 countries uh, Africa that are present here. Anybody from those 54 countries in Africa are here. So for me, the challenge, the, the biggest challenge for me is something that is true for everybody else. It's miscommunication, uh, not just miscommunication, but the fact that today, it seems people seem to believe that facts don't, don't matter. In the past, there used to be, you know, we could agree, disagree on so many things, but at least the fact where were something that we all agreed on. Uh, but since the new concept of alternative fact, which is not fact, uh, people have been losing their lives simply because of misinformation. So that misinformation is true. And that is some, for me one of the worst challenges that we need to face as people. Because if we don't agree what facts are, it is very difficult to build something on top of that. So for me, a misinformation that has taken the internet and social media and those who came out with the concept of alternative facts are a danger to uh, whatever we are trying to build. Thank you. Yes, and I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, I would say that it was quite the journey coming to the fake news strategy over the last uh, term of our national level. But this misinformation has always been us and the people who have found ways to lessen the impact, it would seem, of <clears throat> some discussion point. Um, it's important that we address this misinformation. What do you think the future of being able to get to truth will be 
um, when we be able to get to the truth, um, when it comes down to misinformation in the African American di diaspora, uh, our truth is written in history books. Our truth is is recorded for posterity in you know the Emancipation Proclamation and different things. How do we forecast improvement in our place that increases the hope? of a better tomorrow for our children as the African diaspora. Is that question directed to anyone? Well, let's just have an open dialogue. I think you, Dr. Roll, uh, Ambassador Roll, may be able to answer this one with the uh, Kingdom Clarendon and the mighty work you've been doing across the African nations. Uh -huh. let, me go, let me go back and uh, answer uh, between the African nations and diaspora in the United States. And I have traveled to the continent of Africa for 35 years. I mean, the 35 uh, uh, countries, uh, I'm sorry, 35 times uh, since uh, 20, uh, 2002. And uh, your honor, uh, the honorable uh, Kashina Cross, oh. I want to thank you, as well as the other distinguished guests for being on this call. I have gone to Haiti about eight times okay. and archives in their museum is a rich history. Uh, many people do not know that there were kings and there were people of royalty. And when I take teams to these places, uh, whether it be in the Caribbeans and Haiti, and I took some African-Americans and many of them did not want to go to the museum. And I asked them why. And all they know about is voodoo or witchcraft and archives there and on display, it shows the Queens, it shows uh, Marcus Garvey and everybody. Then I saw it again when I went to Senegal where they enslaved a lot of the African slaves before they brought them to the Caribbeans, as well as to the North, the South and the North Americas. And what really was striking, Mayor Cross, was when I had an opportunity to go to Nigeria and the majority of the African Americans, if we were to take a DNA, DNA test, I believe our origins come from there because they're uh, most of the slaves came from Cameroon and Nigeria. And it was striking when I went to, again, the museum and the historian, a young man, he was so versed and knowing his history. And it's a travesty. Many of our African-American kids do not know their history. Now, mm -hmm. many of our veteran uh, golden citizens, I'm not going to call them senior citizens, that went through the civil rights movement and whatnot, we, they, they know all about the struggles and the sufferings. And even our young people today do not feel they need to know about their history. And if you don't know about your history, you will doom to repeat the same thing and you won't arrive at your destiny in the future. But while I was at that museum at in uh, Calabar, Nigeria in 2016, I said, they have a story and we have a story. And the two stories in Americas or the Caribbeans, as well as over in Africa, hands across the Atlantic, they must, uh, uh, I see one hand because I'm holding my phone. We, got, we must connect and know that before the slavery time, there, were, there was royalty over in Africa, and it all has to do with self image and our identity. And all we, we have been reduced to believe that all we came from was slave, but that's not true. If you go to Africa, you'll see a rich heritage. And I believe with critical race theory, it's nothing to fear. We have made so many achievements and accomplishments. In fact, I'm at the UN right now in New York uh, for the 61st Assembly, as well as the Commission on Economic and Social Development. And I've had an opportunity to meet some of the ministers of different 
um, cabinet position from different African continents. And I made it a point to go down on the floor to introduce myself and exchange my newsletters and whatnot. So they will know that, hey, Africa was a rich continent. Many people doing, they were not allowed to come into the industrial revolution and mm -hmm. they were pilfered, they were raped and a lot of the valuable resources were stolen. But uh, to answer that question, it has to be, it has to do with us going to these museums. In Washington, DC, we have the African Museum go there take kids on uh, tours, and then also you can get on the internet and learn about our rich heritage. Thank you so much for that. I uh, see you back, Director Thomas. Uh, for those that don't know, Director Thomas came from the world of education. Can you address what Ambassador Roll has just spoken about? Uh, where are we when our children have not been taught or are not being currently taught their heritage? Yeah, it's a sad thing and it's getting worse. And the reason I say that is because we have states that are making laws that are unfair, um, refusing to have information given to everyone. Um, we're not making up history, this is history. Uh, and it's a sad time that we're in when we're fighting to ask people to just allow people to open a book and to read about it. And that is a sad thing. Um, I believe, uh, which my family has always shared, is that you learn about uh, history, not only in your school, but also in your churches. And that the pastors and the lay leaders and so forth will be sharing that information with you. I think we need to do more of that. We're not putting that out. We're not allowing opportunities for us to discuss um, in great details with our elders and so forth about what has happened. What do we need to do? Where do we move to the next level? And we need stronger people at the top in leadership uh, to say, listen, we're going to add this in uh, to our curricula. We're going to invite people in from different communities. We're going to ask them to talk about uh, the good things that have happened and also the bad things that have happened um, because everybody needs to know. And again, I, I did out um, Ambassador Roll. It's about making sure that everybody has a sense of understanding of what's going on because as Africans, um, you know, in our history and so forth, we have contributed a lot to this country and to the world. So thank you so much for giving me that opportunity to, to share that. You're absolutely right. The foundation and the birth of our nation was on the backs of our heritage and our legacy. Uh, Director Daniels, I see your hand up, sir. Yes, so having a, actually read the AP study, uh, that's in contention, it's terrible, okay? Mm -hmm. It's terrible, all right? It doesn't talk anything about the seventh century in East Africa when the Arabs defeated Rome and started slavery to 1962 by the Arabs. It doesn't talk about East Africa at all, okay? Mm -hmm. It talks about West Africa and the European slavery. But even when it talks about that, we know now we've got the records of 45,000 ships. We have those now. We have the records. What has not been done is an economic labor construct. Okay, the 1619 was a narrative that got so many facts wrong. Uh, so what we have to be, if we're gonna talk truth to power, mm -hmm. okay, uh, then we must, tell the story, but we must tell the story of where we are now, okay? We must, must not forget our history. We must celebrate it, but we are in an era of change now. President Biden delivered for us as Americans on June 13th, it wasn't the U.S. Uh, uh, Africa Leaders Summit. It was the executive order that gave mm -hmm. a new definition to U.S. policy. And gave a new definition to U.S. policy, and the first thing that it says in its execution is Executive Order 13985, which on day one said the U.S. government for the first time will address racial equity as a whole of government initiative. The NAACP president in that year in the National Convention uh, put it on the floor and it was passed and then forgotten. 
Okay, it's forgotten by leadership across the nation. Okay, and so we're part of a national coalition that has created $589 billion worth of bank-based community benefit agreements with Federal Reserve banks. And so from Glenn Arden and from Prince George's County, uh, we're looking to create a new era in democracy because there's two eras. There's the 1945 era that was created by the United States in the United Nations. And then there was the new era on February 4, 2022, when Russia and China challenged that era. And so I put to you on this call and in this Prince George's and the change in Maryland where the future of the Democratic Party and the new elected governor, that it can be the cradle as the second richest uh, no, county of the 3,000 counties in America is the second richest county uh, for people of African descent, with a county of uh, over 49,000 Africans uh, in it, and that the president of the United States on December 13th said in 180 days, the global African diaspora in the United States, I'm creating an advisory council, and that advisory council uh, will uh, implement strategy under the U.S. State Department with the Domestic Policy Council, with the National Security Council. But we have a unique opportunity to get ahead of that because it's a government of we, by, and for the people. If we don't do that, if we don't do take advantage of it, okay, uh, then we cannot blame uh, people who don't. When we talk about people who are talking about uh, critical race theory, it's a theory. Mm -hmm. It is not a fact. It's a theory, okay? And it's a theory that needs to be taken out and, and walked around, okay? Because it's based on uh, 18th and 19th century uh, suppositions, okay? We're in the 21st century. Africa has a plan for unification. I used to be a diplomat for the country of Guinea, okay? I used to be in a senior honorary consul under His Excellency David Morrow to serve the United, uh, Guinea to the United States. I was called back to service by Ambassador Ali, which is to create the Friends of the African Union. Okay, Friends of the African Union. I had to leave the Black Nationalist Group, the UNIA ACL, okay, uh, be, because I said that we had to reach out to allies. But in that reaching out to allies, I always made sure that we reached the fact because Marcus Garvey's organization was correct. Mm -hmm. And on August 2nd, 2021, the dream of one nation became a reality in the United Nations through the United Nations General Assembly voting mm -hmm. on August 2nd, 2021, to create a permanent form of people of African descent. It can only be as strong as we make it and it operationalized on December 5th through the 8th to the partners in 2022. We sent uh, delegations there. There was over 400 organizations, 600 people and delegations that were there. And so now we bring it back home. We bring it back to Prince George's County. Implementation, okay, all right, it's facts. And uh, I would give to you uh, that uh, yes, we've invited people here uh, to uh, listen to uh, Mayor Cross because in the Friends of the United Nations Permanent Forum of People of African Descent, she's taken up the burden of democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, she's one of the two uh, mayors who have taken up, one from Maryland, one from Oklahoma. They've taken up the burden of democracy. And it's a burden. It is a burden be because we don't have an understanding. We don't understand our constitution, much let alone understand international affairs that Africa says, we love you brothers and sisters. We love you so much that when George Floyd was killed, when we called out to them on that, that, that night that that brave sister streamed it, they answered on the 29th. They then formed a, a coalition of nations. And on June 17th, George Floyd's brother opened the session in the Human Rights Council in Geneva. And so mm -hmm. upcoming 
is the United Nations is coming to the United States to investigate public safety. We look forward to working with you in PG County uh, as to set an example for the nation. Thank you Mayor Cross, for this opportunity. very quickly, can, Mayor Cross, can I very quickly say, add to what the director of the NAACP said? She's talked about the church and the schools, but it's also going to take the parents in the homes mm -hmm. uh, because if you look at the Jewish history, uh, it, it's a passage of scripture that says, that uh, there was a generation that uh, rose up that didn't know their God. Jews were so apropos and passing down history from generation to generation. And uh, we have missed the big mamas mm -hmm. and uh, the granddaddies and the elders of the city. When I was growing up, we had men in the community, they would, I feel like we wouldn't have all this drug and gangs if they were still alive. They'll tell you, boy, get off the street. And you got off the street. And therefore, it starts in our homes. We want to uh, delegate so many things to the church and the schools, they need to uh, just reinforce it. And also, what we need is legislation, believe it or not. Uh, I had a guest on the Kingdom Clearing Call, Dr. John Moore, that does impersonation of the uh, Martin Luther King. And in Delaware, all of the schools, I don't know how many there are, I have forgotten, but they came up with a bill. It was uh, initiated by the Black Caucus and every child and school uh, must teach children African-American history. Now, when I grew up, in the 70s, I graduated in 74. When we had black history, the whites didn't go because they felt like they didn't need to know that. And yes, they do need to know uh, yeah, because yeah. it's not only for us. Yes, we may not know anything and we don't have to wait for legislation. We don't have to wait for the church. We don't have to wait uh, for uh, the schools. We can also get on the internet we can go to libraries, we can go to museums, and we can learn about our history. And so it's no excuse in this day. And on our call, you were on there, many of them did not know how many black mayors there are in the United States. Many of them didn't know so many things. Many people don't know it was a black man that also rode with uh, Paul Revere uh, up when he was, uh, in I think Connecticut or where it was saying the British are coming. And so we need to just get educated and we need to just be more proactive and prevent it. And I wanna to say to a lot of whites is that this is not about feeling guilty. It's not about, because you weren't there back during that time, but we can all join hands like Martin Luther King said, free at last, because as long as uh, a black man is uh, has a noose around his neck and in chains and in bondage. So are other races. So we can all learn from one another because we all are Americans. There's no such thing as a black American. You don't hear nobody saying Chinese American or Asian American or white American. It's only when it comes to us, we want to put that adjectives in front, but we are Americans. And thank so you. I just want to thank you. Uh, Having more like this will educate us and move us forward. Thank you so much, Ambassador Rowe. Let me just give the facts on my city. Here in the city of Glen Arden, we are 83.6% African-American, non-Hispanic. So okay. the preponderance of my city out of 6,402, in accordance to the 2020 census, brings us at nearly 84% African, African-American. So the question of this session was, in a environment where the preponderance of us look like us, the strength of community should be stronger and growing stronger. And yet we do still have the challenges that were bought on from the slavery days, the self-hate, the hate that tears us apart instead of unifies us. Mm -hmm. 
I saw Taru, you had your, your hand up. You were typing there in the chat box. Would you like to unmute yourself and speak to us on the topic? Oh, uh, <clears throat> hi, actually, I, I think there's, a, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to uh, have my hand. I think there must be some kind of mistake. I, okay, okay. Well, I hear you. Uh, thank you so much. I see um, Director uh, Dejokin, uh, you have your hand up, sir. Yes, I know I'm having some challenges uh, with the sign, but I'm following very religiously about amazing things that we said. And I just wanted to answer something that you said, Mayor. I was there with you last Saturday, and I saw how the element we are working to build something, where, when we are building something, you know, it takes steps, it takes patience. I will not you know, they say Rome wasn't built one day, right? So basically, I think you have the ingredient. That's why I was very, when I left there, I was happy to tell Chairman um, Hershey that I was happy he sent me over there in order to see someone that understand that in order to do big things, we have to start with small basic things. So yes, there is a, a challenge among our people because again, Bob Marley said it very clear, they made the world so hard, so everyday people are dying, right? So if someone is striving, I like to, because I work on civil rights, human rights, if someone is starving, we don't go and tell them about their rights. What rights does it make it if they don't have, if they cannot feed themselves, right? So, but coming together, uh, the new job I just got from the Democracy, but put me in a position that will make sure that I have some concrete proposals, again, Chairman uh, Hershey knows about those, that are going to help us build the foundation on which we can build a society where, because again, uh, scarcity is the name of the game, okay? People kill, people are jealous because they have, they see someone having something they don't have. But when we bring prosperity, when we bring success in our community, when people have, what would they need other people? And that's what we need to address. I think by building a society where, you know, people, every single person could use their God-given potential uh, and then use them to be to contribute to the society. When so uh, we could talk, I, I was also I'm so happy to also be with the president of NAACP. We serve very well. I was vice president of Maryland State NAACP. So I'm very very honored and happy to see that I have a fellow <laughs> soldier here with me. Because again, uh, like you say, we like to say you see the end of you still say that color people come in all colors. It does. It has nothing with color the color that human beings see, but the color is that just about an idea. So let's keep working together in building um, those basic where people will prosper. If when people have prosperity, then that division that we have, because okay, someone has, we don't have, is going to go away. So for me, that would be the basic, the way to go and build our society where we can all flourish and take care of each other. Thank you. Thank you so much, Director Dejokin. I want to acknowledge Mayor Noah Waters. Uh, he is the mayor of Eagle Harbor. Eagle Harbor is the one of the last remaining uh, African-American port towns in the United States of America. He is um, an active mayor there. Welcome, Mayor Waters. It's honor to be here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, Chairman Daniels, I see your hand. Yes, uh, I would suggest a, a plan of action that addresses both uh, the you know, Prince George's County, both the Africans, uh, okay, uh, named by President uh, Biden in the uh, executive order, the two million Africans here as an example in Prince George's County. And the uh, uh, people of uh, the descendants of slavery uh, in America, and uh, as as the global African diaspora, we've got a PNC agreement, okay, in place that covers uh, Prince George's County. It's eighty-eight billion dollars over four years. They said they've done seventeen billion in uh, twenty twenty-two. Let's take that dog out to walk. Let's take it, okay, uh, to meet the needs uh, that, uh, as uh, uh, as the incoming uh, uh, secretary, at secretary general of the Friends of the United Nations Permanent Forum of People of African Descent said, uh, Guy Dujunkin, 
uh, whose experience, as he said, is NAACP uh, to work. And let's talk about meeting those solutions. Let's talk about using that. We're going to meet in Washington, D.C. There's going to be over 1,200 of us at the uh, Just Economy Conference in Washington on the 29th and 30th of March at our national headquarters of so 700 groups, 1,200 people. Uh, so let's make uh, PG that example that we're talking about. Looking forward to it, working with you to do that. Thank you, Chairman Daniels. Ambassador Roll. You're on mute, Professor. You're muted. All right, I'm sorry. Uh, you gave the stats of the demographics of the percentages of Blacks in Glen Arden. How many Black businesses are there? Uh, for the most part, we have Black businesses that are LLC businesses that people are running from their homes. Uh, we have at least five Black businesses in our business district. Uh, we do have an African um, a fashion uh, business. We do have a business which is ran by an African doctor uh, called Cherry Blossoms. It is a business that enables those that are impacted by cancer, breast cancer, particularly. And of course, the PNC Bank is ran mostly by our African-American uh, set here in the city of Glen Arden. So we, we have quite a few of our businesses that are on the exe national executive level, sir, as well as LLCs from candle makers to uh, home brew brewers um, to uh, fashion designers to also uh, folks that are crafting art. So we have a, a great videography, photography, uh, sound, DJing um, industry as well as we have artists. And that's what uh, President DeJunkin was saying uh, earlier on Saturday. We bought out many of our artists and leaders from our community that have actually um, produced television and uh, song on the national level. Uh, one song in which is named for our city, Glen Arden. It is a rap song. But we have quite a few African-Americans uh, in the city of Glen Arden who are doing quite well, nursing and um, clinical mental health awareness, uh, uh, HVAC. Those are the types of industries that the African-Americans are um, participating in here in the city of Glen Arden uh, with businesses. We have a billion uh, dollar business uh, uh, bungee, uh, business uh, HVAC is, is, is here in our city as well, uh, who also does, uh, Mr. Hugie does uh, train other younger um, transient African-American uh, children and bring them into the fold of HVAC and other um, of those industries like in the union work. So we got quite a large um, investment but it can always be improved. Uh, we uh, have about a $267,000 housing market. That's our medium. So city of Glen Arden is, uh, let me give a state of the union, it's doing pretty good as far as the African-Americans. It was the third most affluent black city incorporated in the state of Maryland in 1939. And it has persisted and mainly because of its uh, you know, presence here amongst many of the military establishments and the federal government. So preponderance of us will work in those industries as well as um, the industry of uh, energy. So that's what you let have me, in Glen Arden. Let me encourage uh, economic empowerment and also we must really create more entrepreneurs in the Jewish community, money changes hand 13 times. When I was growing up, we had uh, black owned businesses that we patronized. And therefore we must also do that where we will patronize uh, black or African-American businesses and also 
Uh, there are a lot of innovative things out there. A lot of, um, it's since COVID and since the George Floyd, a lot of businesses, Fortune 100 and 500, they're giving money to the African-American communities. And we should have some Magic Johnsons and even Glenn Arden and other places. And then I would like to also uh, say that um, we can uh, uh, just really push this and, and encourage that. And we need to see uh, more of that. And I really, uh, we must stop being so much consumers and we must be the innovators, uh, the wealth creators. And at, we had a kingdom leadership summit. It's about the kingdom. Uh, uh, when we know that we are created in the image and the likeness of God at our kingdom summit, we had uh, millionaires to come in and speak. And it was really um, uh, encouraging to have some African-Americans in their 40s that real estate, into, that's, a, that's an industry that's really uh, blossoming and whatnot. So uh, it's our time and we can... Uh, come from the back to the front and we can take our seats. Thank you so much for that, uh, Ambassador Roll. And I will highlight that, you know, we do have a few others like Horace and Dickey is like one of the youngest uh, females to start a business as well uh, from a food industry to a hair and stylist industry uh, right there on, uh, right off of uh, Martin Luther King 704, uh, Milk and Honey and uh, we, we have other establishments. And I will say that the uh, owners of our Woodmore Town Center at Glen Arden has taken huge strides in ensuring that the owners of the businesses that come in look like us. Uh, the PNC Bank, um, uh, I will say, Director Daniels, thank you so much for bringing out the $800 billion that's out there to help bring forward you know, economic development. And not only that, but we are hoping in this day and age, uh, like I said, our medium income for housing is about 267000 <laughs> But what we do have are really estimated now $890,000 homes valued in the city. One of my concerns uh, is obviously the outsourcing of our seniors. Uh, when you have a housing market growing that expeditiously in the last five years, doubling uh, even its value, uh, that is a strategy. I mean, that's a struggle. Uh, and we will have a huge transient community, which changes our value. And we talk about the African diaspora and us not coming together as family. The fireside talks, as you said, it's only going to get more uh, separated uh, as we go forward. Bishop Lockhart, I see your hand up, sir. Yes, God bless you to everyone and to uh, Mayor Krause. Well, what I want to say is this, okay, that I'm 72 uh, years of age. I'll be 73 February the 20th, okay? And Marion Barry and, and uh, Leon Sullivan and everyone back in the day, right? Okay, it was uh, Glen Arden and Capitol Heights, right? And DC, that's where I got my start from. And as the ambassador for the World Conference of Mayors uh, since 1998 to Africa, Right, okay, and when I went, right, okay, uh, they, the people, right, okay, were so afraid that I'm going to Africa, right, and I had to let them know that it's more dangerous for me in downtown Baltimore than Africa. So those my age, right, okay, we have been feared, sold with natural geographic, with Tarzan, with the apes and the snakes and the alligators and, and okay, and the pygmies, right? Okay, all of those things. My generation have been scared to death, right? Okay, and what I wanna say is this, right? Okay, it is us. The 400 years ended under President Trump. It's our generation who fought singly and came together that defeated the system. They didn't want us to read or any of that stuff, right? 
Okay, so we ain't got to look for a whole bunch of folks. It was only one Martin Luther King, one Martin Garvey, right? Okay, that made that difference. One Chairman Daniel, one you, Mayor Cross, each of us. If we come together, our whole history is behind us and Africa is waiting on us. When I went, they fought against me with their words, okay? Because they was told that we did not want to come to Africa, right? Okay, propaganda, okay? So I had to let them know, Mayor Cross, who do you think you're talking to? I am the son. You hear me? I am the son of the warriors and the warrior's mother who made it over the Atlantic trip. Don't get it twisted. I'm a warrior son who came back home, right? Okay. We don't need a whole bunch of folks. This one did God use a whole bunch of folks. He used one, 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 one and pulled everything together. The thing for Africa, Mayor Croft, is that we have to come together as a family, that we love each other, right? Okay, when we come together as a family because we love each other, they're gonna open the floodgate. They're gonna give us the best, right? Okay, because we African-Americans, we love each other and we not there with the European taste on our head to take from them, right? Okay, so yes, Glenn Arden, okay, is in first position, okay? Mel, you have my documents, right? Okay, and everything where I got my start. It was Glenn Arden, right? Oh, okay, it was Marion Barry. It was Chairman Daniel back in the day. It's us. We don't need a whole bunch of folks, okay, because they're going to want something. Right, okay, and everything. You see what I'm saying? So we need to take what we have, the love that we have together, right? Okay, with all of our wisdom and all of our knowledge that was given to us from our forefathers, right? Okay, and bust the floodgate open. And when we bust the floodgate open, everybody gonna come because God gonna see to it. The curse is over, y'all. It's us. We need to get up and get to school, right? Okay, so that's what it's all about. It's us. Thank we, you so we, much. Each one of us is chosen to go, Mayor Cross. We need to go get out of here and get to school, okay? And you know what? They are gonna follow behind us. The church know, right, okay? But we are the Ruth and the Esther, right? And the Moses and the Joshua right okay of this generation to go because it's all in our head how many degrees do we have right that god have made us for africa we know what to do with the resources we know health care we know everything one mother to a family one father to a family right okay all the degrees we got and we can't use it mm. the door is open so let's get the scoop and quit messing around and take what God had given us, Mayor Cross, Wonder Woman, right? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Come on, y'all. Come on now. Talk is over. Bishop, we received the that. The door You've is open us. under President Biden. I love y'all. Thanks for listening. Bishop, you have given us the charge, the biblical charge even, the G-O, the go. It's time for us to go. It's time for us to unify our people stop fighting against what god has already blessed and ordained it's time for us to take our place and the curse is over man and stand man, for you know where the money at it's waiting on us right exactly. oh, okay well we have to have clean hands and humble knees and say we want to help africa and back home with no strings attached we are ready we are man come on now we ready they wait so on us we are still fighting this separatist thinking, this multifaceted approach to uh, deciphering what slavery did to the African diaspora. The African-American mindset is still trapped in these buckets of ideologies and thinkings that were never supposed to be. And what but, I- 
hope that yeah, we would. Yeah, man, but forget about him. Did it stop Martin Luther King and Garvey and, and okay, and Rosa Parks? No. Yes, they, they opened the door. They we opened all, the it's door. It's us now. It's mm -hmm. us now. Forget what happened in the past, right? Oh, oh, okay, we was cursed, right? Okay, the same curse we do in our home on drugs and alcohol. And, and, and don't bring the paycheck home and all of that stuff. It, it's us. Stop it. Right? Mayor, Go forward. And let's Mayor, go and do it. Mayor, yes, I, lead, I, I lead teams to Africa. And I just got back uh, from Ghana on a medical mission trip. And when I was going in the early years of Royal Ambassadors Ministries to the various nations in Africa, many of them but ask the question, like the gentleman just said, why more African Americans won't come over and help us? And so I took a 70 something year old man to Uganda and when we stepped off the plane, he kissed the ground. I literally kissed the ground and started crying and said, before I died, I always wanted to come to the motherland and you gave me the opportunity to do this. And on yes. that same trip, I took some young people. No, the next trip, we went to Uganda. We built Wingbrock schools for them, et cetera. And I took some uh, government subsidized students. Some of them smoked weed and everything. Now, they didn't smoke weed while we were on the mission trip. Uh, but God did a transformation in them. Many of them accepted the Lord. They saw how the kids walked to school two to four miles yes. in the rain. Yes. And also uh, they have to pay to go to school and they're poor. And we go to school and we have a high dropout rate. And therefore, when they came back, many of them changed their majors to childhood education. They went from D's to a B or A student. And then my grandchildren, all my four sons, four grandsons, uh, my oldest one came to me and said, Daddy, Granddaddy, I want to go to Africa. Take me. So two years from now, for his graduation from high school, <clears throat> I'm taking all of my grandchildren to Africa so that they can see the motherland. Mm -hmm. And uh, they hear it from me. We got to hear it from them. And we do not need to be ashamed. Look, mm -hmm. you know, you're talking about how we are stuck in a time capsule. Uh, from slavery, we should be glad that we came from Africa when you see how some of them live with no water, no electricity, no food. Every day they get up. Everything. Many don't know how they're going to survive but God. And therefore, uh, what we can do now, we were brought to the land of milk and honey so that we can now reach back across the Atlantic take a trip, go and bless communities, build, uh, establish NGOs, do medical clinics. Uh, you can scholarship people. And this is the last thing I'm going to say. Look how ironic it is. Many of them will leave Africa, come get an education, and they end up being millionaires, owning businesses, becoming entrepreneurs. And also we have, I was at a conference two weeks ago where 85% were from uh, Latino nations and Hispanic nations. And they talked about how they were refugees coming from El Salvador and other places. And uh, they believed in the American dream. And they saw it as an opportunity to uh, get ahead and to live this dream, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And they go back and they bring others out of that bondage. How many of us are going back to the Africa, going back to Africa? We should thank God for coming out of Africa, even though we may have been in slavery at most miserable of the time in history, but God has been good to us and we need to now reach back across the Atlantic and bless them. Thank you so much, Ambassador Roll. And you know, you've hit on a point that I've always said, uh, am I my brother's keeper? Can we even reach to our brothers and sisters here in America? And, you know, going to the motherland is something that me and my family will do uh, this summer ourselves. Uh, we tried in 2019, obviously COVID-19 kicked us back off of that trip, but we will take that trip 
and we'll also press forward into Israel as we understand the walk of our faith. Now, what I will say here is that I, I just want to acknowledge our, our other guest that was coming online, Dr. Diallo. Uh, Dr. Diallo, I want to welcome you. He is a public management uh, executive, civil so, uh, society, and he addresses the issues of employability, education, entrepreneurship, and leadership in our youth and women. Uh, he has served as a teacher in law and political science in Nango um, Kanakari University, uh, Kofaana University of Guinea, uh, Minister of Youth, Youth Employment of Guinea, the president of the board of directors of the European Trust Fund and the INTEGRA program in Guinea, which is a 60 million euro project. Uh, he is the founder and the promoter of private schools uh, and is a member of the National Assembly of Guinea, uh, Minister of Livestock there in Guinea and a secondary school teacher as well. <laughs> I welcome you, Dr. Diallo. We've had quite a few full discussion thus far. We've gone from education and the elevation of our youth and the knowledge of our history, but not just dwelling on the uh, 100, 200 years of slave, but how do we break that slavery mentality here in America? How do we reach our brothers and sisters at home, as well as reach our brothers and sisters in the motherland. Um, my husband is an Omega Sci-Fi with LGG. They have a chapter there um, and, and they also are, are able to, uh, they built schools there and they're building water, clean water uh, societies. Uh, Togo, I've just written a proclamation myself enabling a project of volunteers who are putting in a new water um, uh, treatment uh, uh, site for uh, the community there. So water, education, the things that we take for granted here in America, these things are things that our youth need to understand are really the greatest assets that the movement gave us, all of the things that we are taking for granted. So I welcome you, Dr. Diallo. Would you like to have a few opening words? And I see your hand, Pastor Johnson. I'll come to you next, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here with you. Uh, I was glad to join you. Uh, I'm, I'm listening to you. This meeting is very important for, for me, for us. Uh, so I'm happy to be here with you. Um, so, uh maybe uh i will take uh uh, uh i will talk uh, at this time yeah i prefer to uh to listen to you yeah to learn uh, to learn more about this topic i'm i'm so happy to be with you thank you so much thank you thank you pastor uh, johnson Greetings, greetings, Mayor Cross. Greetings, everyone. Um, how can we make a difference? It has to start with at home. It has to start as a model. Okay, uh, I see a great opportunity for uh, support for Glen Arden. Okay, as a model for the United States. Okay, to uh, make a difference along with Africa. The as I. Uh, was a part of the World Conference of Mayors in Orlando, Florida. I had opportunity to um, be with the mayors of Senegal, Gambia, uh, Ghana, and uh, Guinea. And their mindset is a lot different because they are of the younger generation. And the younger generation wants to do it. They want to, they need help. They're asking for help. They're requesting help from the African-Americans and they want action. You know, uh, we all have uh, our basically challenges with a lot of propaganda on both sides, but we came as, as I felt I was the lost brother 
and sister. And they treated me as such with their mindsets are uh, different from the older generation. They want action. With my generation, we want action. We want to stand on your shoulders, honor the history, but yet we want to go forward and we want action. Well, we're going to have some obstacles. That's why we have social media. Okay, that power of social media, when it's done right, it brings a lot of awareness. It brings a lot of uh, uh, proof that the obstacle can be removed, that we can get things accomplished. We have an opportunity with Herschel Daniels and Bishop Lockhart that we can change along with Mayor Cross. We can change the demographics and change and give the African-Americans hope that we can come together starting on this platform. As we come together, we have a model. We have a model that is going to change Africa. Not only just, uh, we are also working right now with Sierra Leone, okay? We're just weeks away of confirmation worldwide in reference to that. And that's going to spin off, okay, back to the U.S. But when coming back to U.S., we have to be doing it also in our community. And that's what we're doing. You know, the stars at home and spread abroad. Yes, it does, Pastor Johnson, and this is all wonderful things. Um, Director um, DeJunkin, um, DeJokin, um, Dr. DeJokin spoke earlier about the misinformation, and you hit on that again there, Pastor Johnson, about how we have been misinformed, this misinformation about those haves and have nots. I mean, everyone has it, and, and Bishop Lockhart, you hit on this as well. All of the rights and privileges are in everyone's hands right now. Even if you consider uh, economic separation in America, the blessing of it is, is there are opportunities, equities put out from the federal government that allows a level of equality. If you can get to school, you get the same education. You don't get to go to a different class, same education. When you come home though, as you're stating, Pastor Johnson, the homework starts, who can help you at home? But the beauty of what now has happened is career counselors have been put in place. And uh, we're working a little bit with the NAACP as we're looking at what the governor has talked about here in the state of Maryland, AmeriCorps, volunteerism as a throughput to college, you know? Learning how we need to serve others helps us progress. And what I love about the African nation that we all spawn from, are born from, is it was a nation of helps, a nation of reach. If I have it, you have it. I remember when my husband and I first got married, he said, we don't need a pool. We need a friend with a pool. We don't need a Winnebago. We need a friend with a Winnebago. So then we would have the pool. They would have the Winnebago. And everybody had everything. I grew up in the South where my father, uh, eighth grade educated, many of you have heard this, had 80 acres of land and was in the process of purchasing more land when he passed, um, was the biggest financial wizard I've ever known. And yet I would read his Sunday school lesson to him so that he could be uh, able to lead the Sunday school class when he got to church. These are the cloths that we're all cut from. It didn't change. What you are born with comes through the ages. We have to tap into that un exposed greatness that is in all of us. In America, one place, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of equity. Uh, you know, the NAACP, Director Thomas, what are your top priorities as you look at 2023 coming forward in getting after this African diaspora struggle? Mm -hmm. Well, I think um, one is we certainly need to reach our young people because we're asking them 
to, to help us make a difference. And, uh, and we're looking back to say, you can make a difference, um, but, and we're gonna come together as a group and make sure that that can happen. We also need uh, the help of our legislators, because as someone said earlier, without those bills, we don't go anywhere, all right? Uh, we want something permanent, not something that someone can say, perhaps we can do something. We want to have it in writing. We want it to hand out to people. And we want to say this is our future. So we're going to need that. But we also will need, and I and I share this, um, you're right. We certainly need uh, our family, uh, the family component, if you will. We don't sit down and have dinner with our children anymore. We don't even sit down and have dinner with our spouse or our partners. We just don't do that. And I think that's the part that we're missing too, is that without conversation, without the opportunity to listen to each other, how do we learn to be better? How are we educated? How do we understand history? And then how do we go forward you know, to become that successful person that we know everybody can be? So my joy and hope is that we will come back to that good old day where we can sit down and break bread together and talk about the good things in life but to also give good information about what can happen and how you can make resolutions come about. Thanks for that, Director Thomas. And um, I was asked the question when I was on Ambassador Rose's uh, segment, uh, kicking off African-American Month uh, about black excellence. How, the, how would you define black excellence was the question. And the answer that I gave was very simple. Excellence is doing something better than you did yesterday, doing more than you did yesterday. That's excellence. And you just got to be black. That's the, it's in the naming convention. <laughs> so if you're looking at black excellence, what does it really mean? It means to not be marginalized. Don't marginalize yourself and don't allow anyone else to marginalize you. Because the excellence that is in all of us is crafted out of years of struggle. And that struggle has already been paid. We don't have to go back and march Selma. It's already been done. We don't have to go and dig up Ruth Bader. It's already been done, women. So what we are trying to say in this recording today, in this mayoral segment, African-American diaspora, it is time to unify and move the mission forward. That is my motto, and it goes for many of the struggles that we see happening across our county. You're right, Director Thomas. If we don't get good legislation that elevates the opportunity for us to evolve and to normalize where years, 176 of them have put segregation, we will have the struggle for another 176 years. As we are growing and communities are blending, I talked about the value system. It's so important that we are talking. The churches are immensely important. Schools, immensely important. There needs to be reform in our educational levels because we're not just teaching the arithmetic, reading, and writing anymore. We are teaching good citizenry training. And that's something that Mayor Waters has actually crafted, a program that teaches young folks about being a good citizen. And that is agnostic of color. That is us remembering what it is to be in a community. We need to build these centers of excellence. The centers of excellence that drives us, that holds us from entertainment to fashion, to writing, to literature, growing multimedia. Technology is right now in the hands of every one of our babies from kindergarten to high college. Every child has a laptop. Thank you, COVID-19. How are we capitalizing on it? Before and after care programs used to be a thing that was given to us by the state. Now, unless your parents, you know, endow with a little money, you can't get into a choral group or art group 
or Taekwondo. These are the things that bring education to life. Uh, history club, science club, debate club. These are the things that teach you about research and analyzing your world. These are not negotiable in my head. We have to grow this for our communities. The African diaspora has a uniquity to our African nations. And we bought that out here. So how are we blending that uniquity to build excellence, build that black excellence? Not that you're excellent and I'm not. We are all excellent because right now, as you said, Ambassador Roll, we are Americans. Amen. Period. I see your hand, sir. Uh, yes, and I'm gonna have to get on after this, but you asked the question, what can we do moving forward? I see it as a three strand and a three legged stool. Number one, we must teach our young people to give service. I have gone to African nations and before they go to college, even over in Israel, many of them go to the Peace Corps and they go and they give of themselves to help somebody else. And I feel like this needs to be reenacted where a giver is a gainer and not always just give me, give me, my name is Jimmy and we taking and go to the Peace Corps, go and serve someone less in a different country and learn uh, to be your brother's keeper. Uh, number two, I believe that it's going to take mentoring. We must mentor our young people. We, they must see models. And then what we must do is connect them to their purpose and their destiny. A role of a parent is not to make a child a carbon copy of themselves or to be what you want them to be. It is to discover the gift things that God has placed into them. And my role as a, a, a parent is to recognize this discovery, uh, then also help discipline them, develop it them uh, in that gifting and they arrive at their destiny. That's the second thing. And the third thing is that God, uh, Mahandi, Mahandi Gandhi, uh, uh, Gandhi said, be the change that you want to see in the world. And you are a change agent. And the, the person that got on and was talk talking about uh, taking action, uh, if you look at drug addicts and other people like that, when they are born again, they say, hey, I want to take my turf. And it's about turf. And therefore, with the, ch the change that you want to see, that passion or that anger that you have that's misdirected, God has placed that in you so that you can do something about it. And I want to close with this. And Mayor, uh, forgive me, I got to get off. Uh, it's been a long day. I got to prepare something uh, for the morrow here at the UN. Uh, so um, this is what Booker T. Washington did. It has been said about him that he lifted the veil of ignorance off of his people. We must lift the veil of ignorance of Africans and the African diaspora. Africa is not our enemy and we are not Africa's enemy. And we are all in this thing together and we can work it out. And this is what he did the two E's, well, I'm gonna add the third. Uh, he lifted the veil through education, get you some education young people, <laughs> and then through industry enterprise. Because once you got it in your head and you'll listen, I remember uh, when my daddy would send me to pay the bills and he was uh, have loans. And the minute he didn't pay, they came and they called him by his first name, which was an insult. But when he paid on time, oh, Mr. Tooks, thank you very much. And when you got industry and when you got enterprise, I want you to know you will make your enemy your footstool. And the last E is excellence. I remember teachers saying to me, 
uh, she demanded excellence. She said, you're going to be somebody. <laughs> and she would not let me be mediocre. She would let, let me make a C. And, she, and we need more teachers and educators like that. So it's education, enterprise, or entrepreneurs, and then there's that excellence. And I really feel that I received this appointment as a peace ambassador. I met a lot of ministers from different countries here at the UN. Uh, uh, I'll be here for another two days. And they now want me to come. And I was born for this. And it started with my grandmother that saw the hand of God on my life. And then I look at a preacher that would lift me up in the Baptist church. There were three chairs, put me in the middle. And that was the seat I was to occupy. Parents and teachers see the seat. Those children are to occupy in our society today. Or Roberts University going there, in the military, going to churches, uh, going to Old Roberts University, prophecies coming over my life that I would be doing X, Y, Z. My late spiritual father, Miles Monroe, in his office, and this is the last thing I'm going to say. I was in his office, and he jumps up and said, you are an ambassador. You are a royal ambassador. That, and change your ministry name to royal ambassador. Took three years past, two years past, and we did that. And he said, you're an ambassador to nation. On August the 14th, 2022, I was given an appointment to be an ambassador, peace ambassador. What does that mean? 16, seven, um, uh, uh, 17 sustainable development goal, water, education, food, poverty, equality, women and gender. I am somebody to make a difference and so can you. Thank you for holding the forum. And I hope that we can have others and we need to bring some young minds and young energy to this forum and let's hear them, hear what they have to say and then also mentor them and push them out in the deep to do what they were created to do to make a difference. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ambassador Roll. We appreciate you. And on a side note, we'll be there also this Friday at the UN with the Drug Free World campaign as we are fighting with peace and love and pulling our communities and our neighbors and our world neighbors to a more unified, peace ridden environment. Um, Hope I will to see you. I hope, hope to, to see, see you here. there too, sir. Uh, we were number 454 to ring the bell of peace uh, with uh, Dr. Hung. And uh, we are so excited for the work that the UN is doing. And thank you, Ambassador. You are a peace ambassador. And it is an honor and a privilege to have you on this line. Safe travels to you on your way home, sir. To um, all my colleagues, keep on doing what you're doing and you are making a difference and uh, know that uh, God is smiling on you. And I release a priestly blessing upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Shalom. God bless Shalom. you. Thank you, sir. President Thomas, any final words as we are closing out our session here? You know, the nice thing about that is we're talking about uh, entrepreneurship and so forth. I'm actually in New Jersey. Um, with the Union College, and we are putting on a number of sessions on entrepreneurship. And what we're trying to do is to decrease that wealth gap, giving uh, young people the opportunity to go out and to make sure if they have an idea uh, or if they have a thought that they think could come in, you know, maybe portray itself into a business, then this is an opportunity for them to do that. We're teaching them um, how to develop their plan, their business plan, um, how to connect with other uh, partners, uh, and also teaching them how to put together a pitch uh, part on it. And, and we have wonderful speakers who are coming in. These are uh, people who are entrepreneurs, large companies, and they are talking about, here is how I did it. These are my mistakes. And I want to share those with you so that hopefully you won't have the same experience I had, but you will move ahead a little bit faster. So I want to say that we are trying to make a difference and we hope and pray that it's carried through the entire uh, world 
so that everybody has an opportunity to take that one step where it can better them the way that they want to be better. So I, I certainly thank you for this opportunity as well. Yeah. Thank you, Director Thomas. And to our Dr. Diallo, sir, any final words there? Dr. Diallo speaks uh, French as his first language. Yeah, yes. yeah, I am here. Thank you so much, uh, Maya Cross. Uh, it was an honor for me uh, to take part of this meeting, uh, to make a difference, to help uh, African people, African diaspora, uh, to help Africa uh, to develop. Uh, this uh, is very important meeting, and uh, I congratulate you for this initiative. I hope we, we will continue uh, to work it, uh, to work on it, you know, and to make difference, uh, to make big thing with uh, with with Africa diaspora, with Africa. Uh, so I'm grateful uh for this invitation and uh, i'm available to continue to work with you uh you know to make a difference for 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 us for africa thank you so much thank you sir and we look forward to working with you as well and uh we look forward to hearing about your next uh level appointment uh as we discuss much success to you there in guinea <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So Dr. Dijokin, any final words from you, sir? Do we lose them, Dr. Dijokin? Okay, I do see that we have um, Director Daniels, any final words, sir? Uh, as I head to our normally scheduled Wednesday 8 p.m. call, I uh, would uh, let everybody know that every Tuesday at noon that we cover uh, the issues that we're talking about for implementation at the United Nations Permanent Forum of People of Africa Descent, go to pfpad.africa. Africa. I can say that I'm most proud until 2021 that that achievement that you can now get a domain named Dot Africa. We started that 40 years ago, and when we were the uh, senior honorary consul for the Republic of Guinea to the U.S., it is now the time. I look forward to working with all of you for implementation in PG County, as Bishop William. Lockhart said, the retired bishop in God and Christ uh, has said he got started in Glen Arden. So what is so natural to come back to PG County and to work with PG County, Guy DeJunkin uh, in Maryland, uh, Mayor Cross is crossing the world. Uh, okay. Uh, once again, as uh, I've only met her and Dr. Crossland uh, recently, and so I look forward in my recovery from my quadruple bypass heart surgery uh, this year to being that change that they are uh, have been since they attended. They attended the US Africa Leaders Summit, the business portion of that conference. They were there, and, okay? And so I look forward to it uh, and it all coming together. Thank you very much, bye-bye. I have to go to my other meeting. Thank you so much, sir. Bishop Lockhart and, uh, well, let's go to Pastor Johnson and then we'll go to Bishop Lockhart. Thank you, Mayor Cross, I appreciate it. I had the opportunity to meet Dr. Uh, Diallo, a former minister and congressman in Guinea, of Guinea uh, in Orlando, Florida. I had to run back to my business cards and I said, I know that they, and uh, it's just an honor that I had an opportunity to meet him face to face and uh, looking forward to meeting each and every one of you uh, face to face soon. Have a great evening.
Thank you so much. Uh, let's see, Director Dujokin. Dujokin, Guy, are you there? I know there's multiple meetings happening tonight. Okay, um, Dr. Croslin, did you want to have any words to say, ma'am? Absolutely. I just think this was a phenomenal mayoral <laughs> forum. I think this was your best one so far, Mayor. Uh, I learned so much. I love, love, love Bishop Lockhart's energy and passion. He just says what's on his heart. And I, I just love it. And the and I think he gets a lot of that energy from starting out in Glen Arden, right where you are, Mayor. And I just thank you so much. I love Glen Arden and I love wearing my crown over there, even though I'm from Virginia. And the reason why <laughs> I'm able to do that is you are such a change agent. And you told me, you said you are reaching across the, uh, the area because you have a reach. So you reach Virginia, all of Virginia, Fairfax, all, everybody knows Mayor Cross, right? <laughs> And now, this, now you're going to the United Nations. Now, or now you you've reached beyond the United States. Now you have reached across to the motherland. And I want to congratulate you, Mayor Cross. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Croslin. And I'm just gonna, Doc uh, Bishop Lockhart. I'm gonna let you close us out in prayer uh, as we go forth into this African American History Month for 2023, but before I give you the mic for closing us out, let me just say, we are American history. We are American history. We have an important step. We have to free each other from the constraints that are blocking us from being black excellence and greater. We have to find our place in our collective histories. It is why these forums mean so much to me because we bring out things that you wouldn't ordinarily think about. And in this one, it is the hope of this mayor that the experiences of the African-American family, 176 years is linked to the growth and the preeminence of our next second and third generation, that it mattered for them being greater than we are today. And that would equal success. My motto is moving the mission forward. The mission is now ours and we must carry the water to the well because we are nurturing our next generations. And when it is our time to lay it down, May the final words be well done, good and faithful. Bishop Lockhart, if you can, close us out for this mayoral forum, the African nation, Africa diaspora. Yes, ma'am. And what I want to say to everyone, you are the key to your bus, to your airplane, to your train. Who are you bringing aboard your bus to do the mission that God has given you? Right? Oh, okay. Mayor Carl, you are the key to what God has given you. And we are taking a seat on your bus. Okay. To not only come to help you in Glen Arden, but also to Africa. Right? Okay. And each one of us, right, have a part to do on your bus. One person. Show me why the Lord, there's two Moses and one and two Ruth and two Esthers. And they're not two of you. There's only one of you. But look at what you are, are doing. So if you allow us on your bus to go to Africa, okay, to come to Glen Arden. Right, okay, and we specialize on your bus, touching and agreeing with what God gave you to do for us to help humanity, right? Okay, 
then God's people will be blessed, right? Then you will understand why God chose you coming out of your father's loan and you rushing to get across the finish line and your mother stumbled. And God forgave you in your mother's stomach because he had a work for you to do. If you protected the country, surely you could protect, okay, Glenn Arden and us on your bus, right? Okay, because you asking us to come to you to help you do what God put in you as a mayor for the next generation. So all we have to do is say, yes, Lord, we chose it. To do what? His perfect will for who? For humanity. Was Jesus back across alone and the whole world go free? No. Come on, think about what God has given you. Right? Okay. History says we are not supposed to go to college. Right? Have a credit card, have a car, have a house. Right? Okay. And everything. We are the ones, Mayor, that God chose to go back home with the victory, right? Okay, and the reason why we are getting hurt and abused is because the evangelicals know the prophecy that the black is going to be first and they are going to be last and God is going to give us the spoil. It all happened under President Trump. That's why they was praying in the White House with Mike Pence and all of them. So it's you. Right? Oh, okay, you take what God given you. And if you need two or three buses for us to get to Africa, so be it. You the bear. <laughs> right? Okay. And we will we will come and we'll be a part because we can make the difference. Right? And and my closing, right? Okay, what I want to say to you, take agriculture out of your house and see how long you can last. Okay. Put agriculture in your house and agriculture indirect out of your house. Turn the power off, right? Uh, uh, okay, throw the pots and pans away. Throw the rolls away, the refrigerator, okay? The detergent, all of those things. That's what they don't want us to bring to Africa. Agriculture direct and indirect. You put them two together, you got Glen Arden. In your house, Mayor, since this is your platform, take agriculture out of your house, direct and indirect. Get the pots and the pans and the food and see how long you live in that nice house, right? Okay, and that's what they were taking from us, right? Because they knew we were the warrior children that's going back to America and the evangelicals know it. That's why they are attacking the African-American and the people of color because we are the warriors, right? Okay, who survived the abuse, the misuse and all of those things. But God chose us, the African-Americans, right? Okay, to go help, right? Okay, our kindred and Israel, right? Okay, so I thank you, Mayor, for the peace that I felt from everyone that spoke. I thank you for the peace and the smile, okay, that I see on your face now, right? Okay, a victory, right? Okay, and not in closing, let me ask every last one of y'all, everything that y'all went through, the good, the bad, and the ugly, did your faith increase or did your faith decrease? And every last one of y'all say, oh my God, my faith increased. To do what? to do his perfect will for humanity, because all souls are his, okay? So what I want to say to everyone, I love my family, right? O okay, God chose us. Let's do our part. And mayor, you are the key. And we are the tires, the boats, the boat, the nuts, and everything else, okay? So God is good. Heavenly Father, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for your peace that I felt throughout the whole time Oh God, the Lord, that we spoke amongst each other. Lord, I ask you, oh God, to purify and sanctify the air that we breathe. I ask you to purify and sanctify the liquid that we drink. 
I ask you to purify and sanctify the food, Lord, that we eat. Cover us in the blood of Jesus. Be in every curve and be in every turn. Take control of the steering wheel as we go to and fro. Lord, watch over us and protect us and our loved ones. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all. Thank you so much, Bishop Lockhart. And everyone, continue to move the mission forward. I'm Mayor Kashina A. Cross. Thank you so much from the city of Glen Arden for this mayoral forum, the African nation, the Africa diaspora. Have a great day.